be the last one maybe got cut off once again i don't know it, it does kind of piss me off on youtube because the videos do get a lot less views when they're split up into parts like this but whatever uh so anyway this is my chelsea epiphany portion which i wrote this poem okay it was a weird kind of foreshadowing because i was i was when it was right after i moved in with sarah so i took the train in i don't even remember why i think it was like i had dropped sarah's saxophone off I think it was like when she, her saxophone got busted up on the floor at um, the last resort. And so I had to take it in to get it fixed at this place in Midtown. So I was walking from Madison Square Garden, I think, is where I got out, 34th Street. And I walked south on 7th Avenue to like 23rd Street. And so the whole time I was writing a poem. I was writing everything I saw. And it was sort of the first time I had ever done that, really, where I was, like, out in public, and I just sort of live-streamed. You know, I did a window poem, but I was, like, it was, like, walking down 7th Avenue. And so I called it Chelsea Epiphany. I read it. We were staying at um, their friend's house in Fort Greene. And so I recorded it on their MacBook in the photo booth camera. And I used the audio for this. That's the audio. It's like the recording I did on their photo booth. Or maybe it was our laptop, but it was in their apartment in Fort Greene. We were out of our apartment. It was crazy. It was so crazy and dramatic. I don't go into it here, but... So I was walking, and I went back the next day, or maybe it was the next week, and I filmed all this shit. Because I had the idea in my head from the Burnett Mayor thing, like, I want to do a poem that's, like, attached to the video, Right? This was the first time I had really done this. Uh, at least, like, in a more concerted way. I had, like, I had written poems and recited them and put video over it before, but this was more like, okay, I want to, like, write a poem that's about a certain, like, place or whatever, seeing a certain thing, and then I want to show the thing, you know? And so this is very similar to... The episodes that I put together this year and last year where I have these hour-long or two-hour-long, like, poem movies where, like, you hear literally my whole fucking stream of consciousness or, like, internal monologue as you're seeing me go through my life. This was sort of like the first version of that. This was like the pilot or the demo for that. And But also the thing that's weird about it is it was kind of like, like, there's the Chelsea Hotel, right? Like... This was almost like a seed. You know, this is two blocks from where I live. This is two blocks from where I am right now. And a lot of my life, right, I'm walking up 7th Avenue and writing about it. And so this was kind of like a weird foreshadowing. This was right after I moved out of the Sluge. But, you know, three years, I guess, before I moved in here. And, of course, you know, there was, <laughs> there was no way that you would have predicted that, like, I'd be living here three years from when this happened, right? Um, or a little under three years because it was a whole different fucking... <laughs> but it's an interesting foreshadowing. This was 2018. A lot of my shows from the past two years, sort of, this was like the seed in a way. And in a certain way, Burnett Mayor was the inspiration. You know, the memory piece. That was the inspiration. If you watch those episodes, Memory Zine and the October episode, which are shortly before this, they're from 2017. Those are interesting episodes because I had an audio track that I just put kind of a, a you know, like Burnett Mare's memory thing. And she wrote a diary every day and she took a roll of film every day. And she put it all in her art gallery. So you go into the gallery and you hear her listening to the diary it just plays the whole day and then you see the pictures they're on the wall so the idea being you're getting kind of the sum total of her whole experience between the two in a certain way you're getting like an exhaustive portrait almost like a Ulysses thing of like her total experience you know the writing includes a lot of her different sense there that was my library it's closed now. They're putting in new elevators, but. London Terrace. I haven't watched this, I don't think, since. But. 
Those were nice pants. I walked until they fell apart. I saw Claudia Rankine, I remember. She's in this video. You see her from behind. <laughs> I saw her on 7th Avenue. So Claudia Rankine is technically in the video. Not that anybody gave a fuck about this video or the October video or anything else. And maybe my art at this point, if you even can call it that, is very simple. I mean, compared to what other people do with computers, what I do is like, I mean, a fucking, you know, at this point, your iPhone generates these videos, basically. It like puts together like these highlight reels of like a night in New York, and it'll just throw something together that's basically like this. And so, look, there's my fucking corner right there. <laughs> that was it. Can I go back? There it is. That's my corner. Because it's Ashbury's apartment building. So I've always been around. There it is. There's my street. There it was in uh, October or March 2018. That was my fucking street in 2018. <laughs> that's crazy. And there's the Ashbury building. So that's why I was hovering. I've been to this block before because my friend Daniel uh, showed me that's where Ashbury lived in that wonderful Punjab deli. We went and ate there. So, and also the, where Le Grand Cafe is, that's one of the most interesting blocks in New York, really. All those little restaurants and stuff, that little strip is pretty, pretty special on the right here. That, that right there, that whole block. You know, that's right around the corner from my house. It doesn't get any better in New York, frankly. Why are all the, there are these blank shots is that an, on purpose or is that an accident that might be some kind of problem with the bounce i don't know look that they were just that was a shot there's torn page where i was building um they were building all of this bullshit all the hudson yards that's what that was a shot of the construction of hudson yards i wish the chelsea epiphany poem was in this book it should be because it's a pretty good poem but it's like a 10 minute long poem it also was sort of like a breakthrough for me because it's like I don't know I don't typically write even though I'll write a poem that might be that long like th that one was a little bit more of a concerted effort it was like wow this is cut really fast it's probably cut to the poem see there's some Alex Katz shit there you know this was all special to me when I went and saw this stuff this was all like whoa this is what poets do, you know. They go to Chelsea, they go to the art galleries, they look at the Alex Cat stuff. Um, should I get closer? Can this be closer? Would that help? Or does that hurt? I don't know. There's a lot of bad pop art. <laughs> okay, what else is from around this time? hard pass you told me nobody's in the desert an instant as cleats of a dog called me good boy after i dumped water now you're a fish laughing in tribute to the spoilage of this group pick meek to be forgot and scientific fact you believe in what's wrong told google play to fuck off came out in the broad daylight of no questions asked to lose money Laughing into the handshake of the isosceles curvature of death. When will people think I'm a dumbass? Paris's access at happiness. Or destroying the hate that drainos. You left without a pleasant night's sleep above your enemies. But then again, that's to be expected. Nobody's alive in the intermittently polite absence of the fuzzy matte ugliness of the here and now. Ants ransacking the hippie coffee shop. Quiet socks. Smothered with Campbell's tomato soup, Kitty's getting hers. Spain, the birthplace of rolling thunder. Your ponytail in my dream was so little, like a petite rat tail. Do surface charges phase you? I like watching people go to work. Slept time and a half on whatever's at my window. Uh-oh, we're about to drop. See you when no stone's unturned.
I am trapped inside the tight room of my shirt. You rely on the canal to port me up the water gloss to an irreverent river. Plants jungle the sill, the bay window, following the sun's every move. It felt like soleil or some appeal to majesty. There's a disorder to the lower lip that is essential of a way the words have of tripping into the scene only to become its star. But I resolve never to know what one day truly means, only to falter into a fictional appropriation of said events, my so-called locality and the late paginations of silent monologue. This is the memories in the episode. See, it's all like pictures. I guess we'll let's do that for a second. Is that I don't know if that's as interesting. This is from twenty seventeen. This is prime. Um, I don't know. I was kind of getting like an art education. I went to BHQFU. I went to a lot of different workshops, whether it's at uh, little one-off things at LIU or Brooklyn Poets. Uh, I think I was in another class at this point, wasn't I? I was doing something every week. Oh, I was at Poetry Project. I was in um, Arlo Quint's workshop, Poems Against... The Oligarch, I think is what it was called. So this is from a movie called uh, The King of Marvin Gardens, where Jack Nicholson is a radio host where he has a show where he just talks about his life. And I thought, oh my god, this is like scenes from a life, exactly. I even look like this fucking guy. <laughs> but it's supposedly based on Wallace Shawn, so... I use that, I got it from the Brooklyn Public Library and I use that little moment from it. Uh, this was the episode that won the award. This was the Art World episode about this girl painting a picture of me when I was naked. So, you know, I went out of my way to do all these, like, you know, I screen capture that stuff, I put it in the timeline. There's a picture of her. You know, she, it's, this was like, See, there's our messages. <laughs> kind of gave it an up, updated look. You know, it made it look a little profesh. This one I really worked on. I tried to make it funny. I tried to make it accessible. It was, a, it was an example of one of the first episodes where it was like a double portrait. She was taking a portrait of me. I was taking a portrait of her. You know, she came to take my picture naked, ostensibly to paint a painting, which I never saw. I don't think she actually did it. Um, it's all about men's empowerment. <laughs> sure. It was just about getting a bunch of naked pictures. That was probably the, the assignment. <laughs> Not really uh, painting the pictures. But anyway, it was fun. But it was like a double... You know, at this point, this was like when I was deep living the New York school thing. And so this was my art news, James Schuyler, or, you know, I wanted a naked picture like Frank O'Hara or something. You know, it's like you're a poet. You need a naked picture of yourself, a naked portrait. <laughs> you're not a real poet until that happens, so. But this, you know, like I hosted this. This has some conscientiously New York kind of elements. This next shot is uh, in the East Village. Okay, so this was a poem I wrote around that time, Punk Translation. I wrote this at BHQFU. Tea and little shoes, equation with nothing inside. Turn swoop wing over the dock, Ohio moon zoros the toll booth. I see a little demon named Zack. Pork pie waits outside the door, back turned at the kitchen island. You who Larry's playing disc golf with a basketball. They repeat their unkind snub. 
Little Demon Zack and Sidekick. Wishbone at the diner counter pulled both ways. You who Larry's playing disc golf with the basketball. Buster Keaton still waiting and Otho's joined him. Little Demon Zack and Sidekick tee it up and whack at the ice skates hanging in the closet. Four ice skates. Huge doorknob inviting the claws to the gun rack. You who Larry, the basketball went in the trees. I found it there. See, this is the back of where Eileen Miles' apartment is, this graveyard. They refer to it in their poems. And so I thought this will be a good New York kind of, you know, there's Max. The joke was, this was not strictly true, but the joke was he was on his way to visit when this girl was trying to paint a naked portrait of him. So it added kind of like a heightened, oh shit, you know, are they going to be able to, you know, that was, that was dramaturgy <laughs> or that was like, that was, that was structure. That was my, that was playwriting right there. <laughs> I was adding, I was raising the stakes, but it wasn't really how it went down. I do miss my brother. I'd like to see Max more. He's been sending me messages and stuff. See, here she is in my room. <laughs> This is the actual moment. She was cool. I don't know, like everything. She wasn't like that interested in me, actually, really. She just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly what her deal was. I think she went to Pratt. But, I mean, there it was. There's a the tiny room. I don't know. People thought this was funny. They thought it was, like, saucy or spicy or something. Yesterday poem. Foggy morning pulled apart by sun, my high room accepting the light hanging in the trees. Yesterday has been replaced by right now, the exceeding present. Yet yesterday still happens, a flyer for your shitty band. Memory plays favorites too. It's amazing how the world moves along, how just three years ago, or even two, is so apparently stale, how I've been the same person fading in and out of style, how a beer in a can gets warm, then you put it in the fridge and it gets cool again, but skunky, and when you try to drink it, it's gross. Guy with arms full, of moving boxes, kicks something down the street in front of him as he walks. The opposite of silence. At the end of a working day, there I am naked. <laughs> I, I zoomed in. I actually got a sh the whole shot I'm nude, but I zoomed in. So th I could have chosen to show my penis in this. To me, this was like, you know, there's that portrait of Ted Berrigan where he's nude. <laughs> that was basically what I was trying to do here. I mean, look, there's my, there's my plant. What could be more luscious and voluptuous than this? I'm in my studio, my poet. This was like my rent controlled apartment. It was like, you know, at this point, I think it was probably four or 500 a month. I had all my books. I had my nice little poet life. It was modest. These poems are from that time. You can kind of feel that. It's before Trump drove everybody nuts. Everything became imperative and kind of uh, uh, frantic and um, hysterical. The Trump era was hysteric, you know, not in a good way, <laughs> not in a funny way, like in a nervous joker way. And so... This was only the beginning of that. He had only been inaugurated a couple months earlier. So it, it hadn't really taken full effect yet. You know, and, and I don't know, trying to liberate yourself and be more Dionysian. You know, this is a Dionysian. The poet, this is what poets do. You know, they get nude and they, they take it to the limit. The opposite of silence. At the end of a working day, I'm not sure why, but I grab the closing subway's door 
so a girl running for the train doesn't miss it. As the sun goes down, a man waters his window box planter with a saucepan. Your poems, I like them. I like the way they don't do anything. You know, this was a weird one that Ashley like shared on social media because I almost didn't even put these in the book. These poems from Average Lounge. In fact, I took a few of them out. That Average Lounge chat book I made had a few more poems in it. Thoughts of the day. Stuff that I read at um, my reading at uh, Secret Loft in 2017 was landmark. <laughs> it was scary. I, had, I freaked myself out. I'm only now getting back to that point. Uh, but these poems, Ashley shared one of them on social media, so uh, I don't know. You never know, like I said, what people are going to like and what they're going to resonate with. I think that's one reason why I have a prolific and unedited output, because that's what I've found, is like a lot of times it's like the peripheral stuff that I don't even like or consider anything that people like respond to. Like when Kelsey sent me screen caps from videos of mine she liked. She picked poems that I read in like literally like 2011. And then like a live stream <laughs> where I'm like getting insane, where I'm lighting incense and like I've got a beard and it's like, you know, that's not necessarily <laughs> the main corpus of what I'm doing. That's That was all like... Uh, stuff that I just considered like throw away or just like excess. But once again, you don't it, like this. Yeah, a lot of times it's the shit that you think is the worst stuff. <laughs> Usually, in fact, it's like the stuff that you think is the worst stuff that people like, like burrito bowl. <laughs> I don't think burrito bowl is a bad poem, but it goes through a lot of different registers and people probably like it because of the sincerity and the kind of teenage emotional parts. Whereas, like, the parts that are the best parts, I think, are the parts where I'm like, I eat pad thai, I eat beans, I eat a burrito, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> I eat eggs, I eat pad thai, I eat a burrito bowl. That, to me, is, like, a pretty good fucking poem. Youth Vacation. Though this be madness, yet there is madness in it. Misguided and I can't hide it. A one-off, tantamount to pitiless, meaningless, Fortunato angering the bus. I stop my little mouth up with language. The breeze filled with copper arranges itself nicely on the horizon. We travel substantially to the four corners of gold. I keep trying to make a thing out of it, but no one will join me. Average Lounge. We give words for things we don't need words for. Situations so specific they barely pass. We get through them like music dueling at the checkout for a moment's notice. It's hello time every time you start a sentence. Madonna carrying in her arms her own body across the street. When you're disappointed with yourself, what you're doing is spiritual. The technique involves disaster. Those were like Park Slope poems. I'm in like a transition. You can see I'm like learning the kind of cartoony New York school stuff. But it's still kind of rooted in radio. I wish a poem would just come on the radio and I'd write it down and later read it on the radio where thousands of people would hear and think, God, that guy's quite a poet. And I'd get all the credit instead of the radio whose idea it was 
in the first place. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not everybody's who's crucified gets a statue. I want to be academically limitless, a first century Jewish terrorist named Jesus. I just want to write little working poems in the garden. They made our hometown twice as big, built a new marquee. Things change, is that trite to say? There's a Starbucks where the Panera used to be. Do I feel that far away? The city was never mine. I'm glad they changed it while I was gone. I'm useless and fast and want home to lose me. So next time I go there, I don't recognize it at all. This was like the first wave table. Big ones. Toby Keith's I Love This Bar and Grill feeds into Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Hotel and Casino where Rick Springfield's guitar is displayed in a bulletproof case. Potheads are just parrot heads that don't go arg. A1A began to relate gaudy shades of pink turquoise to the Beach Boys Kokomo video. Remote control cars, pow, pow, power wheels. Stacks of last night's art catalogs, just an excuse for the verbs to act in rapid transit. Bio-attachment of a pollinating drone, a mother giving birth to a Wi-Fi signal. That's that. I gave myself over to diminished expectations. The gliding buildings fought for air in the streets of air. Religion of jargon. Drunk as fuck in the practice space. Really shitty. It was like hours. Tried ripping myself off, but it didn't work. Transparent Abelard. The mind is the black box of the organism. Just because something happened doesn't mean it was meant to. Dutch angled as W.H. Auden. Flower whose action is beauty. Secret Manifesto, How to Overthrow the Patriarchy if You Are the Patriarchy. It would be my privilege to use my privilege to displace my privilege. Okay, this is a good... Uh... Draw a note to self. Drive like hell, you'll get there. Twelve rooms, seven people, mornings, evenings, night. Our teeth bleed from using the same toothbrush. Ninety-nine kids bunk next door in the Catholic school gymnasium. Bart Simpson's skull and crossbone skateboard, yellow wheels really grind. My small fern long dead, but still retaining some green. So I go on watering to make up for having let it die. What's cruelty in a world dependent on cruelty? A bird in the hand is worth two in the hand. This line is a physical sensation, something that falls or rises. Ninety-nine kids burn in their bunks. If anybody needs me, I'll be out to lunch. So this is Eileen Miles reading at Long Island City Bar. This is 2017. This is literally six years ago. <laughs> That's how long I've been sort of orbiting. That note to self, I wrote that in um, a Brooklyn Poets workshop Emily Skillings gave about assemblage uh, before their open mic. And it was like every line had a different you know, assignment. Write this for this line, write this for this line. Uh, something that falls or rises. That was literally the assignment for that line, and I just put it in because I thought it was nice. But this poem is really about the sluge, again. Twelve people, seven rooms. So Twelve rooms, seven people, mornings, evenings, night. Their teeth bleed from using the same trooper. This is what I was feeling at the time <laughs> about living in this house. This poem, the In Like and Headaches poem, these ones are really about those situations. Room poem.
the widening astonishment of dawn. The widening astonishment of dawn. Trying to wear my own face here. It's kind of working. No, uh, no called, no show, busiest night of the year. Dick move, but what choice did I have? Once you delete giraffes, you can't get them back. Look, the whispering light upset you. Palliative epoch, it's a nice retirement. Life in a quiet panic crushes the silence into a fine sluice. Can I get you anything? Water? Coffee? I'll be right back. I like the speed chess sequence. That's never really gotten the, the attention that maybe I should do a chat book of that. Actually, I might be able to put that into a chat book. Let me try to put together a speed chess chat book. It's something that's kind of long overdue. It's one, It was a breakthrough for me. I would say the speed chess thing was like, that's where I really discovered like, okay, I can just write everything and then pick what I want. And that will be how it looks on the page. That really is my technique. <laughs> that's my, that's my poetics really. Really, that's about it. Just write everything and then circle the shit you like and, and type it up that way. Normcore armchair. So this is the Normcore armchair. The, uh, the fuck chair. <laughs> Although it's not a fuck chair. See, when I lived in this tiny room, it was so hard to have sex. It wasn't hard to have sex, but the room was... It made it interesting. Because I had a loft bed, so you had to hunch over... And all I had was this chair. <laughs> so literally most of the sex I had was in this chair. <laughs> and you go in the loft bed and it'd be creaking and shit. And you're like overlooking this window. So you're kind of like, okay, you can't go nuts. The ceiling is right here. In the summer, it's all hot. I did that for five years. The fact that I'm in an apartment where I can even fit three people to have sex <laughs> is insane. And a huge upgrade. Because literally most of my time in New York was spent in a fucking shoebox. And I had sex in it. It wasn't, you know, like that part was hard. But it was like, I have that line in the poem about like it's like Alice having sex with Alice in Wonderland after she's wearing a house. That's how it felt, having sex in that room. So having this space <laughs> to really try some shit and stretch out, I want to, you know, that is, it's something you might take for granted. But anyway, this chair was where most of the sex happened because it was, you know, the soft, <laughs> you didn't want to climb up into the bed necessarily. That was a different kind of commitment. <laughs> but it's the normcore armchair, sort of, I guess. Darkness locks up the day. A whole house is brought down on my head, brawny and agitated. First specks begin to wander in from upstairs. December clutching for leaves as stadium lights power the snowflakes. I wasn't sure if I'd lived the events described in your book before, but as I read it, I recognized it was me kept in those pages. I'll take a UB40 reggae cover any day of the week. Life is for coming up with theories about. So this is BHQFU right here. There's my class. This was like our class reading. I read, uh, you are trapped inside the tight room of your shirt or whatever it is. I'm trapped inside the tight room. That's what I was writing at this time. Around this time, we had our, this was, I read, we had a class reading at Poetry Project. So I read Diary of an Outtake. And I read, I am trapped inside the tight room of my shirt. And then this, this was around the time I started to put Easy Paradise together. The first magazine I started to compile. There's people from this class in Easy Paradise. Um, it was great. This was Industry City. You know, this was right before it really blew up as like this corporate gastropub destination. But talking over each other. They know I'm their kid forever. The generation stopped walking up the stairs like an escalator out of service. 
The warm-up feels good. Think I'll stay there. Look for something deeper, like the bare tree out the window, reaching its arms, a begging crowd without sleeves. The fire of me, the fire of you, the stars learning they can sing to themselves in light. Silence chiming like a carousel's organ. Two arms, two legs, free to operate the wound. Dossiers whisper within their own pages. Folders closed and humming, like sheet music faintly audible in the mind of the composer. A pile of notes hitting every key at once. My life, my thought, my crisis. All happening, all sounding. All changing. In that poem, I was just trying to get a feeling of everything happening at once. War and peace. Let's rev it up, baby. Let's waste and break. Let's die till we die. Beauty never speaks, only metabolisms. Red ears soloed like cups. The lady sat on her lake, proffering sword. I nexted it, wanting instead to repurpose the bright decals over my face, the channel where they kept sex. Masses fattened into cotton, coddled, waddling. I request another word, the whisper kernel. Hairline fractured in radiology, my gripes pitch songward. Mom saying she should have brought war and peace it's been so long. Freshly stitched and now I go to Tolstoy's estate each spring when everything's drooling. We barely touched, or maybe it was just me. Had faster access to my parents when the sound blared and they died. People who knew how to have fun, how to forget years of being born and losing it right away. The way the foreign tongue is just melodic. Things trying to make sense and failing. I have to go now. I have to go back to work. Is there anything I want to talk about? See, this, so this is a montage about, this is like looking back on all the shit that happened in this basement in 2017. So this was six years ago. This is already looking back. You know, this was looking back on like, you know, 2015, 2016. Wild Pitch. Despite my best efforts... This poem is being written. As across the tree-bridged chasm, Zen archers are practicing without bows. This will be a good one because this is sort of an art poetry one. This was right in the throes of like me. I don't know. My poetry, it was getting, in, not that it wasn't interesting before, but like it was changing. It was getting more brief. I don't know. Wild Pitch. Despite my best efforts, this poem is being written. As across the tree-bridged chasm, Zen archers are practicing without bows. It's not the sound of the cracker, but the way that it bites. Or so I've heard, but you can never be too sure about anything anymore. True con men riding out on parade. That's how life gets the worst, the repetitive, the repetitiveness. Oops, I'm sorry to have woken from my dream. I thought I had found an answer there, as well as its question, but I was wrong. It was just the way my mother looked, in a new dress from Sears, many years before I was born. 
typical Karen spilling perfume all over the Rite Aid cards for Molly and Mom. Oh well. At least they smell nice. Okay, this is the poem I wrote on this closet. In the closet when I moved out of the sluge. This is the poem. You see me writing on the wood. Here's the poem I wrote. It's called Moving Out. <laughs> Although in the, uh, the actual poem, I called it something else. I had a different name for it before. But I renamed it Moving Out. I hibernated with Ted. Lasted four years two days utterance mobile which shifted its weight to orange babies turn perpendicular after a time at least since there's been TV or light sockets empty the room silence was essential to calling the thing by name window frozen as proper the eyedropper pouted goodbye youth Goodbye, moon. This room was snow. This room was snow. All right, this thing is probably going to run out. Should I talk or should I keep reading? My, my October journal is also in this. The October journal is one of my, it's my political book. It's my utopia. It was when I was in the Burnett Mayor. So like the October thing, there's a video on YouTube. You can check it out. It's called October. It's my political doctrine for the future society, how I think sh things should be. I lay it all out in a, in a book length poem. It was very influenced by Alice Notley, Disobedience and various Alice Notley stuff. So it's in this book, the whole October thing. Or there's, you know, there's selections. I don't include all of Speed Chess. I don't include all of Average Lounge. I don't include all of October. I sort of, you know, edit it slightly. But I encourage people to watch the video. I read it a lot during the pandemic <laughs> because it was like, it's like my constitution or my Declaration of Independence, which, you know, to be honest, are sort of poems. I don't know. Is that giving them too much credit? I admired Thomas Jefferson as a writer when I was a kid. I thought that shit was like... <laughs> he had bars. I mean, you know, I don't know. October 13th, Masculine Dementias. I make a lot of noise in, frankly, bars where nobody's at. Looking down at my body in the shower, I realize I am a woman. It would feel weird to read Midwinter Day any time but December. Now I need to read C.A. Conrad and who else? Mythical bicycles taking their course up into the fumes of the stars, back down into a junket of mint leaves. Never pondered but strayed seminal miles, did what they're told and let the faith hash it out. Two words in a close relationship are sisters, like dollop or stirring. Others are cousins, like hatchet or frenemy. The human must subvert our notions of what is natural law or redefine them using the overwhelming leverage gained over natural selection. Population is a bubble. It's probable many will die, perhaps most. How does one talk about that and not wail? Caught in the aftermath of a plentiful epoch, we have no opportunity for longevity. They used it all in a forceful projected memory. Sometimes you're stuck in a terrible era, but lucky for us, history's not life. Hopefully we can live beneath it while making our way from birth to death, emergence to removal. Performing uninstall on my horrific male tendencies, we're boning up on Counter-Strike, and it was right to break the dick into a handful of flowers. 
into a bed full of flowers. Not a handful. Into a bed full of flowers. I fucked that up. I'm enjoying reading this over these projections. So I, I don't know. I feel like this is giving an interesting kind of journey through those years. If you want to talk about an artistic retrospective, this is kind of an interesting way to do it because you're getting clips of everything. It's kind of out of order, which I guess doesn't really matter that much. But um, you're seeing, you know, through the various stuff, you see me at the beginning, um, this, and this is kind of my art education, you know, going to freeze, you know, at this point, Eileen Miles is my hero. I'm trying to be an art critic. I'm trying to write, I'm trying to do talks at like, you know, Miami Museum of Contemporary Art or whatever, or LACMA. You know, I was trying to get on that circuit, trying to become some kind of super hip, like, lecturer at art museums and shit. That's what I was trying to do at this point. This year at Freeze, there was a talk between Eileen Miles and Ben Lerner, I think. Or Ben Lerner was there giving a fucking speech. I like partying, dark clubs, good music and dancing. Karaoke once a week, depending where about town. As for New York, the cool bounce to L.A., upstate, Detroit. Loud speakers and drums kickstart the awareness. The body reaches into its globe and spins. Aliveness crackles with Egyptian reggae. Maybe not the best lyric, but a sincere cry for passion and joy. Hubbed beneath a philanthropist, we thank the money thrown upon us and gas back all is taken in return. Did you know Allen Ginsberg coined the term flower power? What an ad man. Tagged to a generation and it's stuck. Stand in the holy smoke, sense prehensile. Artificial covering of toes, checking of boxes, humble brags across the sky. Should I be more paranoid about facial recognition software? A life of epic and none else. The song is its momentum, is its purpose. Its constant turning and variation is its form and melody. A mime troupe shaping a human bus, making it go. This bad poem really only works in the configuration of the book of bad poems. A few of its friends. If you didn't like this one, please keep reading. It will all make sense in the end, I promise. It is not meant to be written, but said. It's not meant to be sung, but thought. The secret is not limiting, but continuing. And going the notion you'll eventually get someplace. Which is not really the fun part, especially when life is had that way. Making little boxes of cookies and selling them out. Marketing haiku in bulk. Bought the building in 1980 when the neighborhood was all tires and crack. Now get rich off millennials a grand a room a month apiece. Boomers own their children. Wrote them a financial leash of debt. Death to anyone over 60 and fuck their possessions too. I've got an app where we can share and keep writing poems far into the night, this night and all others after.